everyone, Sean here, and welcome to this video. This is going to be a more of a encapsulated, I like using that word nowadays, but um, condensed version of essentially my opinion on the live stream that had uh, that has happened uh, very recently for Genshin Impact, uh, featuring the 5.0 updates and uh, other other updating uh, features for. Uh, in the future of Genshin and I guess beyond that even but anyways um, you know overall I th I thought this was essentially one of the best if not the best ones um, in a long time for the live stream anyway um, it is still kind of interesting though you know with the stuff around Natlin the you know the controversies and stuff like that I mean things are still just continuing to thrive for Genshin anyway I mean it's <clears throat> that whole stuff kind of seems like an afterthought unfortunate I mean because it's it, it would be nice <clears throat> if excuse me um Hoyo would answer to those um quote-unquote sort of um requests as well but they seem like they made up their mind in fact they even like made it clear in the corner they had that like um, little disclaimer for a good amount of time uh, saying that you know Genshin is a fictional world it's not supposed to be really depicting like you know real groups people and events and stuff like that you know which um, I think there is something to say about that especially you know uh, if they're going to directly take um, references right from our cultures right you know soul one to one even right especially with the names and stuff like that you know but um unfortunately they're not going to going to answer to that um just because that's kind of like their mindset or that's just kind of you know uh how it goes with these situations because well money talks right and you definitely want to make sure the core audience right um is essentially well fed right which is the chinese players and everyone else is kind of a, a second thought and so um again unfortunate but meanwhile we do have things to uh look forward to especially um a number of features are coming to uh genshin in the future of things first off uh i thought this whole this whole thing is uh, really convenient and handy but um, <laughs> um, nice little overview for the stream without having to go through all that footage. But yeah, um, the stream itself was fine. Um, I think it was more than what you expect, but by the end of it, that's where it got really juicy. So especially with this. So this is the anniversary uh, stuff that's going to be um, consistent starting from, uh, I believe the, I guess the 8th of, October it looks like here because um yeah this is this is not right into um 5.0 but at a later date so anyways when you um uh, log into here <coughs> uh, Genshin at that date and beyond I guess uh you can definitely choose uh one of these seven um five stars these are the standard banner characters They've been around for a very long time. Essentially, uh, when you lose the 50-50 pity, which we will talk about that later on, um, you will get one of these seven characters, right? And funny enough, I still don't have Mona after, well, four years now. That's crazy, right? Pretty crazy, but it took a um, update like this, of all things, for me to able to get Mona, uh, likely anyway. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's a start, and um, you know, a couple things to note is that they're going to continually add more and more characters to the standard banner uh, th in, in, uh, throughout the future of Genshin. They they, they uh, said that in the um, <clears throat> in the live stream with the closed captioning and everything. So I hope they keep their word. Is the thing, <laughs> um, you know, it, it is one thing to say, but to do it, that's a whole nother thing right i like to see action uh as well as words right to go together with that right um but yes nonetheless so uh this will be once a year 
you can actually pick your five star, right? At least from this uh, standard banner. And of course, again, the standard banner is going to expand throughout time. And yeah, I, you know, like I said in the um, the live stream, I think some of the, the characters that even come out in the limited banners, right, ha have started to become like standard character status, right? Standard banner status, like. Um, even for example, like Ganyu, for example, uh, for example, I think she is kind of like that character at that point. At this point, same with Xiao, um, you know, and uh, even like Yaimiko to an extent, right? Depending on what kind of angle or what kind of perspective you want to see or you uh, see you with. But um, either way, there are they are going to add more and more characters throughout time. Right, you know, especially when some characters are becoming very archaic, um, more and more, as more and more updates uh, go on. All right, so we got more stuff for free, or getting more stuff for free, um, sometime at the end of 5.0, which is a nice temple right here, which is 1600 uh, primo gems. Uh, Sanctifying elixir, which is very, very good, because what that is is basically allows you to change um the main stat into substats right so essentially you can get the sub the main stat that you want plus the um the two subsets such as crit rate and crit damage right those are the best ones uh when it comes to um uh, dps anyway uh, and also so, uh, some sub dps's and so on and so forth but that's a very prime and um simple example right so you definitely want to uh, see stuff like that, right? Finally, and uh, I believe these are going to be given twice per battle pass or something like that, or or season, I should say. <clears throat> so, um, very limited quantities, but nonetheless, it's pretty nice, right? And then I guess you get some other gadgets, including the uh, the kaboom box and this uh, pet, I think it is. Um, as part of it, the commemoration of sorts. And then at some point uh, from August 30th to the 18th of September, you have the op opportunity to log into seven days uh, and get seven fates or excuse me, uh, 10 fates for that. So it's kind of like basically like wait, like in Star Rail. Um, hopefully they do these more frequently because that would be pretty nice, right? And then top up bonus reset. Don't even know about that. Um, these are the new, um, oh, actually, huh. mm, oh, no, these are, these weapons are from the, for, uh, the forgeable lineup of things is that I guess you can get these for free if you do some things, uh, with the web page or something like that. Okay. That's pretty cool. Um, uh, yes, this one, if, when you complete the Archon quest for 5.0, you get this many, uh, Primo gems with this 500. Very nice. Um, or at least decent, right? Uh, complete tribal chronicles within the designated duration to earn uh, primo gems, which is about 120 ish, and then you get these uh, materials and stuff like that that you can get for your uh, Natlin characters. And then there is a quick start feature um, for those who want to experience a new Archon quest right away, I guess. I think you have to um, meet certain criteria still, but uh, yes, you can do it relatively early when you are starting Genshin Impact right then and there, right? As a very, you know, the sort of the the Genshin newbie, let's just say, right? Uh, while you explore Nylon, you have increased Primo Gem rewards uh, for upgrading or excuse me, such as upgrading the statues of the seven um, from 60 to 100. And then when you're like opening uh, certain shrines or whatever, it's from 40 to 80. And then they increased, um, oh no, no, this is like a combined uh, equip. No, yeah, this is a combined sum, yes, of the Primo Gems for op uh, opening and uh, upgrading the statue in Natlin. Okay, so, Okay, this is another big one, right? System optimizations. This is this is like 
probably the biggest one uh, for a lot of us Genshin players up to this point, right? Which is, you know, involving with, of course, the gacha stuff, the gacha banners. Uh, one of the central mechanics and things in Genshin, because, yeah, of course, it's a gacha RPG, right? Uh, for the epitomized path, which is the, basically the weapon banners, they are actually reducing the fate points from two to one. That's actually really big, right? Now, but now it essentially, um, when you when you break it down, it's kind of like uh, like Star Rail, you know. <clears throat> Instead of you know having to lose the uh, lose the pity or yeah lose the pity twice, you just have to lose once, and then you get the weapon that uh, that you want. Now it essentially functions like. Um, the other banners essentially so having the fate points or calling it fate points at this point funny is kind of pointless but hey you know i guess it's uh, all part of the the marketing gimmick or whatever you want to call it so but it is nice to see that they are you know um really trying to make things a little more accessible but while you know kind of like meeting their 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 own ends right they're uh you know it's it's, it's like uh having both parties be happy right the players are happier but of course the the you know the business side of things are also happy as well because you're still spending money to likely get these banners or, or get these uh, weapons and characters and such especially if you want to do dupl get duplicate copies of said weapon or character right and or both you know now, in, this isn't the interesting update for this one, right? It's called Capturing Radiance, which is the new wish mechanic, right? Um, I guess they're making it sound like it's going to be available soon, as soon as 5.0 drops. But essentially, um, somebody was able to break it down, allegedly, I guess. And it, it basically is a chance to win the 50-50 more likely that's essentially the the simple gist of it um the exact percentage is still not clear like uh, some say that you have a five percent chance to activate the capturing radiance but um you know getting capturing radiance essentially could just make things a little easier right um uh, which now becomes a 55 45 split instead of a 50 50 split so it's kind of still unclear. Um, I mean, it says there is a chance of, of it to trigger if you are not guaranteed to win the promotional five-star character during the character wish. When triggered, the five-star character you win in this event will be the promotional character. Okay, so it sounds like, right, that you have a 5% chance, hypothetically, um, or allegedly, excuse me, to trigger the capturing radiance, therefore, um, you have a 5% chance to beat the 50-50, I guess. Or 5% more of a chance to beat the 50-50, I guess. So it's a little weird. It's it's um, The basic gist of it is that, yes, you have a little more of a fighting chance to win those 50-50s. Therefore, you have a little bit more of a potential, right, to get duplicate characters, right? Because what if you lose the 50-50 or, or the 55-45, right? Or let's just say the Capture Radiance, I don't know. Um, it uh, could allow, right, for that to trigger, right? Because now that you have a higher, a little higher percentage, right? Because you never know when the next character pops in after you decide to um, pull more after your guaranteed pity, right? You know? When you're in that scenario, who knows, right? Luck, your luck can pull through right after your guaranteed pull, you know, or guarantee. Uh, uh, when you win the the um, the banner character pull, right? So either way, this is going to help you with your 50/50, um, right? No matter how you look at it, whether it be five percent of the uh, uh, five percent um, chance to trigger capture radiance or it's basically a 55 45 um pity or whatever you want to call it all right so um but either way it's like hmm very interesting right that hoyo is doing this now 
uh, world level 9 will be unlocked and uh, once you reach rank 58 uh, you'll have increased difficulty but at the same time you have increased rewards and when you ascend to that 58 rank uh, oh no excuse me when you, when you um, reach right to world uh, level 9 you'll get these rewards which is 100 Pimo gems to equip it fate which is basically the story banner or uh, standard banner um, currency. It's whatever, but um, when you get to world level nine, you'll have increased difficulty, but you have uh, <clears throat> um, increased rewards. You get more out of um, you know beating monsters and stuff like that. Uh, and then uh, the, I think the adventure rank is still more or less the same. Yes level 60 i think right so that i don't think will change there uh bonus returning rewards additional uh uh 10 fates uh which basically means um when you return to play uh natlin right for those who have like logged off for a while now <clears throat> because you're kind of like done with it until natlin com comes out once you come back in, they'll actually give you 10 additional, I guess, um, intertwined fate, especially if you haven't logged in for 45 days. And of course, you have to be rank, uh, adventure rank 30 to activate this as well. So once you meet these cri two criteria, uh, you can, uh, you can get 10, f uh, fate, uh, during the stellar reunion stuff, which basically means it's like a catch up mechanic when you uh, come back in. So that is pretty much it on that. It, 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 it's a very nice condensed um, overview of the live stream, right? Now I do want to um, add to that by talking about the stuff from the trailer, uh, especially with the characters and a little bit of the world. I mean, the mobility stuff is really cool, but um, the one I really wanted to talk about, first off, I, I do want to pull uh, Oh, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? It's a good shot. This guy. This guy looks really cool. Um, actually, they didn't even talk about the the banner stuff. That's kind of surprising, actually. But anyways, um, Kanish is the one that I want really want to pull. Which who uh who is going to show up along with Ride and Shogun with her for her rerun once again. Uh, I think that's during part two of the 5.0 update, right? And then the first one will be Mulani and uh, somebody else. I'm forgetting. But I'm not going to be pulling on those two banners either way. It's f uh, for me, Kanich uh, or Kanish or um, uh, which one either you want to pronounce it. But um, most of all, right? I mean, we have a new boss. Uh, um new boss to fight for more materials, right? Uh, yes, we do have Mavig right here, right? Looking pretty cool. But most of all, right? On top of having the story, right? Um, with a bunch of characters joining up with the Traveler, you have the Captain, Capitano making an appearance now officially for sure fighting the archon that is pyro you know <laughs> looking pretty cool but um he finally fights and guess what he uses a sword so he's a sword user likely anyway he's likely going to be playable um as word in the street goes now Initially, I did have mixed feelings about this design for uh, Capitano. I actually really like him with the um, the coat on, which is uh, right. Let me just see right there. And let me see if I can uh, get a good frame before he just like rips it off, you know. But let us see. But you get the point. Him with the coat on, I, I, in my opinion, is way cooler. 
you know. So maybe hopefully like when he's playable, this is his default outfit, but when he actually like, I don't know, like alts or something, or has his burst or whatever you could call it, this is what he looks like, right? If that's the case, I'm okay with that. But otherwise, this particular design um, is not completely selling it for me. Somebody put a very good uh, image to like compare to. I forget which um, I forget which particular tweet or post it was. Uh, I'm still trying to find the image that I was like spe specifically looking for, but there is there is this comment which I kind of agree with. Uh, kind of lame, low key. I expected him to be much more imposing, given that we've what uh what we've seen of him in the respect he commands right yeah like when you look at this design and then like the gravitas that he's been imposing for like so long now um especially when you read up on the um stuff in genshin yeah like it is it is a little disappointing in that sense um but you know i guess it is what it is but let me also say though that he is he does fight quite more majestically than expected than what what I, what I would expect from someone like him. Uh, especially when he like he, he has like this these like fencing esque moves. You know I know he like moves pretty fast, but yeah. Um, he like does like you know thrusts. You know what I mean? So. Pretty unexpected, right? And on, yes, on top of the fact that yes, um, Mavuika does use a claymore to fight, so she is a she is definitely a claymore user, which, um, I believe she is yes the one the sole claymore user for right now within the Archons. <clears throat> well, yeah. Anyways, um, overall though, pretty pretty cool. I do look forward to the story uh, for 5.0 because there's going to be two parts for it automatically. So right off the bat, so that's pretty cool. Uh, or two acts, I should say. So that is going to be pretty exciting to uh, check out. On top of like, you know, exploring and everything, that's going to be a, um, a killer for my time. But yeah, you know, I think it's going to be pretty worth. So... Uh, 5.0 and of course all the like updates that are coming up for the game of itself is looking really promising. It's, it's, it seems like really now it took four years that they're answering to a lot of the things that have been um, an issue, right? The gotcha stuff, but also like the rewards, right? That the stuff they give out has always been so like very small and sparingly, right? In comparison to... Um, Star Rail and um, you know Zenless up to this point, right? You know, even those two games alone have already been been so giving, right? So it seems like, especially after the incident with the the annual rewards, including of course the Chinese New Year stuff, right? The Chinese play players had enough of it. They were, they were fed up with it. They're like. Wait a minute, what you know, what's what's with this, right? Like, why are we only getting three fates, right, for the Chinese New Year or whatever? Whichever celebration it was, you know, it's like, oh yeah, after three years, here's three fates, right? That got the Chinese players very, very uh angry, to put it nicely. And so seems like then since then, they've been trying to like answer to those requests right and now they're starting to you know um essentially not catching up i would say but like becoming like star rail and zzz you know and um about time right i mean um some say it's like oh yeah you know it, it, it's possibly like the competition and stuff like that i partially think it is like that but I think um, it's more within the Hoyo verse, literally, right? Where um, 
not only the two game two games I've been talking about have been getting those free summons and stuff like that or the free pulls, but just like the Chinese players in general, like they've been you no, know, I I think they're like fed up with the the philosophy or like the the approach that Genshin has been taking right when it comes to giving back to the players you know especially when when all the gacha games other gacha games have been very very rewarding and much more um uh sort of charitable right back to the players you know because it costs them nothing right to do so but Genshin for some reason has been so stingy about that for over th three years that it's ridiculous right and again the Chinese players has had enough of that so I think that played a large role as to um, Genshin waking up or now kind of giving in to those little policies, right? Or principles, rather. And now they're finally trying to fix up the banner stuff, the gotcha stuff, and of course, the rewards. You know, now we're getting a free five-star character for every year. You can choose, right? And hopefully they live up to the word and update the standard banner too as well right it's not just those seven same seven characters we get an expansion as time goes on there's also one more thing i do want to share and i just came across it i believe so let's um, go back and find this video from genshin update it does involve with um the CEO or yeah, um, Dawei, right? He's like the big guy behind um, Hoyoverse. So let's go ahead and take a look at. Oh, this is a seven-minute clip. Um, there is a, a two. This should be a two-minute clip right here. Oh yeah, right here. There's <laughs> 大家感受到的事情我们也在感受只是对于我们来讲呢我们听到声音实在是太多了我们需要沉下心来去弄清楚到底哪些是来自各位旅行者真实的声音所以在今年年初的时候在我们整个项目组和我都特别迷茫的时
lined up so perfectly because this game released during the pandemic like pretty much like the prime time of pandemic yes granted like um september i believe around september of 2020 but that, that was the year the prime year quote unquote for the covid 19 pandemic so all those things kind of lined up for dawe and mihoyo at the time and now they have become hoyo verse right they, they have this little little universe right of um their games at this point and then like look at their other games like star rail and and even zzz right uh, look what's happening with their games or those games and um the level of competition right the inspiration that um has come after genshin you know we now we're seeing more and more of these like other gacha games you know so if anything it's not really so much like oh yeah those games are or like the next genshin killer quote unquote it's just the fact that genshin is the sort of like the um not mother of all trades but like just like this such a wall breaker you know this game i feel broke another wall this time you know leaving a much more well i hate to say impact right and now that this term gotcha right it's much more familiarized than ever it's it's like literally burned into our gaming vocabulary you know gotcha right it's just it's just it's it's a it's a common thing at this point like when you say gotcha to other gamers they just know they automatically know you know um that's just kind of like how it goes now yes granted i mean got the word gotcha is not entirely new or anything like that but you know i think this game really sort of cemented that fact right because there's, there were so many people that started playing genshin back in um that time in 2020 and man it definitely left some sort of impact in the world of gaming and you know we we can give some thanks to uh or a lot of things to breath of the wild and such but you know genshin it's its own thing. It became its own thing, especially once you like get, uh, sink a certain amount of hours into the game. It it it's it, it becomes something of itself. And so, uh, while the game didn't really do it for me when it comes to like you know life changing or anything like that, it wasn't life changing for me. But I understand the significance of what Genshin did to the world of gaming, right? It left it, it has left a mark and up at this point right no matter what kind of controversies has been gone through the, that footprint that it left in those sands will actually never go away you know whatever ground it laid on right whether it be sand soil snow whatever right that footprint ain't gonna go away man like genshin is just so big that anything after this it's like any game after this i don't think it really matters at this point you know no matter what like like you know the whole like genshin killer thing i mean i understand but you know you gotta you, you gotta you gotta really see it right you know for what genshin is you can't really deny of how big it is that's why there there are these games um that are slated to be called you know um genshin killers because genshin is just that big why would you have a killer game you know for for um a game that would be not significant right so it has grown to this point it's just huge you know and some people's lives have been have changed forever because of this game you know a lot of people's lives right content creators and all that stuff dawei's life I'm sure changed so much, you know. So good for him, and thank you, Dawe and team, for bringing a game like this. Right? Um, I mean, to me, yeah, it's a it's a good video game. It has its flaws, sure, but it's still really fun uh, for what it is, right? Um, and now, yeah, four years in, it's now changing for the better, but it's a start. Let's hope that they can keep it up. So um that's really all i can say for uh for genshin 5.0 and like the future and stuff like that uh what do you guys think um uh, what do you guys think of genshin at, at, at this point 
Is this really making you come back? Uh, are you still continuing to play Genshin? Are you excited for Natlin? Are you excited for the new changes? All that stuff. Anything related to this video, leave it down in the comment section below. I would love to read them. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. And of course, the subscription button. Really do appreciate you guys if you can take the time to do so. Um, you know, I'll definitely continue to play this game. I do want to see what the story will become of, right? Especially after Natlin, you know? Um, Capitano making it into the picture, right? Um, at, at this point. He's going to leave some sort of impact as well, I'm sure. And then, um, let's not forget, we have, we still have uh, Sneznaya, right? That's going to be pretty damn big, right? But we'll have to wait. We got the uh, exciting things to see, like Mavuika, like my boy Kanish, and um, Capitano, right? And uh, much more, so... Again, thank you very much, and uh, I hope to see you all in the next one. Sean out.